uh, it is my honor and uh, privilege today to uh, have on the other end of uh, our connection here, all the way down in the Grand Caymans in the Caribbean, John Felder. John is the president of Cayman Automotive, and I have been following John's uh, adventures and exploits, uh, I think, you know, pretty much since the local uh, papers started covering him there in, uh, there in the Caribbean. So it's a real delight, John, to finally get to meet you in person. Well, thank you. Thank you so very much. Well, look, let's, let's start. Go ahead. Yes, it's an honor for me because obviously I follow EV World closely. Well, thank you very much. Well, yes. first, first of all, for those of us, and that includes me, uh, who have never been to the Cayman Islands, could you sort of tell us a little bit about them, uh, and particular with an emphasis or focus on uh, how people get around there? What's the transportation system like? Okay. Uh, well, the Cayman Islands, as you know, is located about uh, 90 miles south of Cuba. Uh, it's a very, uh, uh, it has been called probably the closest island to America as far as the experience of any of the Caribbean islands. Uh, you have a lot of expats here uh, because it is the fifth largest financial center in the world. Oh, so really? A lot of money here. Wow. Uh, this, on this small island that's only 24 by 10. Okay? Wow. And there's about 55, 60 thousand people. Um, it's a very beautiful island and I started coming here in the early 90s uh, and became friends with the late uh, G. Hurley Marin uh, and that's where I got my start. But it is the British island, very safe, um, very progressive, very clean. It's just a beautiful, beautiful island. So, as far as transportation, uh, you'll find that uh, most of the people here uh, love their vehicles. Right. Uh, as you know, uh, when I started this journey, there were no laws on the books that would allow electric vehicles to be driven because of the antiquated laws. Right. So it took seven years to get the law changed. Wow. And obviously uh, the duty was also high because if you remember back in uh, when I imported the first Chevrolet Volt uh, back in 2011, the duty was 42% on electric vehicles. So what I had to do also in conjunction with getting the law change was getting the duty to be reduced also because I could never sell so many electric vehicles with a 42% duty rate. Right. So in March of this year, uh, March of last year, the duty was reduced to 10%. Oh, wow. So it All went right. from 42 to 10%. Right. Okay. Okay. So now we are number three uh, in the Caribbean as far as rates on electric cars. I don't know if you know this or not, but Bermuda is number one. Right. They have zero, if yeah. I remember correctly. Zero percent. Right. Aruba is at two percent. Excellent. And and, and um, Grand Cayman is at ten percent. Ten percent. All of those countries that I just mentioned will be part of the network of electric vehicle sales. Okay. There will be a total of eight different Caribbean islands that I will be working with oh, uh, to, to sell electric vehicles because the market is small here. So it was always right. my plan right. to let this be the hub but sell to every one of the other islands. Right. Because that is the third leading trading partner for the U.S. when it comes to volume of export imports. Oh, that's fascinating. All right, well, look, so you, I assume you, you've got, from the LinkedIn bio, you've been something like 20 years or so at Chrysler Corporation? Yeah, 25 years. I was uh, executive with Chrysler Corporation. Uh, absolutely loved my career, uh, and now I'm getting a chance to live out a dream. 
uh, I retired to go to work, as my <laughs> wife said. All right, well, so what got you interested in, you know, because obviously Chrysler has not been in the forefront, unfortunately, of, of doing electric vehicles. Uh, there was that brief period of time when they had that very exciting hybrid that they developed as part of the PNGV program. It looked like they were actually going to take sort of a leadership because they actually they built what we, at that time at least, thought was an affordable hybrid. Uh, and then, of course, things sort of, pardon the expression, went to hell in a handbasket. Um, you know, Chrysler had its economic problems, GM, you know the story. Um, I know this story quite well. So, so, so what, what attracted you to electric vehicles and when did you start getting serious about them? In 2005, after I've been here, right after Hurricane Ivan, um, you know, electric cars were was, was starting to come on the forefront. Uh, obviously, uh, if you look at the, uh, the Caribbean as a whole, most of them have shorter traveling distances, yep. um, abundance of sunlight. And most of all, all of the Caribbean islands want to be green forever. Right. Okay, so that was an underlining uh, reason, was how do you protect this beautiful place and reduce the carbon emissions, which is paramount and, and, and root cause of a lot of our issues today. Yeah. The automobile obviously is the... Uh, probably the worst polluter when it comes to environmental uh, pollution. So I started thinking and thinking and uh, I was reading about Tesla and uh, Richard Branson. Those are two of my heroes. Okay. Uh, especially Elon Musk uh, because what he has done is he has made people realize that electric vehicles is truly the way of the future. Yeah, definitely. And, and they no longer are saying things like they were when I was with Chrysler. You know, at Chrysler, we didn't think about it. You know, yeah. if somebody mentioned electric cars, we would say it never happened. Right. You know, I was a naysayer. Yeah. But I'm no more a naysayer. Uh, electric cars are here. Uh, they are being accepted. Uh, I've been honored by uh, uh, China, invited me two years ago. BYD, which is, as you know, um, Warren Buffett's company. Yep. Uh, I uh, got an invitation uh, to Cuba. Um, I got an invitation to Aruba. Okay. Uh, which I'm going there in October. They want me to be a special guest speaker. Right. Uh, so it's a lot going on. As you also know, because you follow the press releases, I am now set up in St. Thomas okay. and also the Bahamas. Excellent. Okay. All right. So they are now selling electric cars for the first time. That's amazing. So let's let's talk and about some, let's talk about some of these vehicles now. As I understand it, the very first electric vehicles that you began to import were the Wego vehicles out of uh, I believe the company's located in Atlanta. That's correct. Uh, uh, of course, these are initially these are actually sort of Chinese built knockoffs of the, of the smart car, um, but they've done really, I think, a better job than some other companies in, you know, in, in ensuring the quality and the look and the feel of, of that particular vehicle and, and upgrading it. So tell us a little bit about why you ended up going with WeGo and what's your experience been. All right. First of all, uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, the quality of the product the management, American-made, um, all of the above. But the very first car that was sold in the Caribbean was a Jim. Okay, it sure. Jim. All right, that was the first electric vehicle sold, and that was sold to Commander Bay, okay? And they were the first, and they still uh, support me big time. In fact, currently, um, Commander Bay has two charge station okay. uh, and they are all solar assisted. Okay, these are in Kamana Bay is a, I assume is a vacation resort, is it? 
Well, Cabana Bay is a planned community, oh, okay. like we have in the United States, All right. and uh, and you've got to look it up. It is an outstanding development. Okay. And uh, when you look it up, it's uh, the Dodd family, a uh, uh, Kenneth Dodd, who is an American, who is now uh, a Kamanian. He has Kamanian status. Okay. This was his dream to build an exclusive community which would be self-contained. So look it up. Okay, I will do that. Very good. All right, so the WeGo, you, uh, you began negotiating with them, I assume, sometime shortly after you got to, to the Caymans? Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, I would say it was 2007. Okay. 2007, uh, we started talking, and I wanted to uh, be the first dealer to have a highway speed electric vehicle uh, on the island that had passed the U.S. crash test. That is very, very important to me, obviously. Yeah. So uh, I achieved that in 2009. Okay. So at that point, though, you're continuing. I want to hear a little bit more about this. I mean, I've, I've, I've authored a, a couple of bills here in Nebraska, one that, uh, that allowed the use of gem-like vehicles on the road that took two years of lobbying to get through. Uh, this year, I introduced a, an electric bicycle bill that would that would define an electric bicycle as a bicycle. Again, uh, that was you know, I'm assuming that's going to be at least a two-year effort here. We didn't get it. We got it out of committee, uh, but we couldn't get it to the floor for a vote um, because of time constraints. So I'm assuming it's going to be at least a two-year effort. Seven years to get. To get uh, the the law, <laughs> the law changed yes. there. Why? Yes, why, why did it just take so long? Just sort of because the bureaucratic, bureaucratic governments, and that exists everywhere. Things move slower in the Caribbean than it does, obviously, in America. Uh, but you know, Bill, one of the things that I can say, I don't look at it as a negative anymore, because what has happened is that when you think of electric vehicles, not only in Grand Cayman now, but throughout the Caribbean, one company comes up, one name comes up. When you Google electric vehicles in the Caribbean, or Google my company or myself, right. you know it's hundreds of articles that have been written. Uh, right. So that type of name recognition would cost you a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. All right, think about it. If you were if you were going to be in marketing and you wanted to get your name out, like Cayman Automotive is today, right? Uh, it would cost you a lot of money. A lot of money, right? So that's how I that's how I look at it now as a big time positive. Right. Anytime you got BYD out of China calling you, yeah. Uh, you got the Aruba government calling you. Yeah. St. Thomas, uh, Aruba. Yeah. I mean, I get calls every day, and people want to go green. So right. obviously, um, uh, I don't, I try to set it up with a dealer on each of the respective islands because it would be too expensive for me to try to cook a cookie cutter Cayman Automotive in each one of those islands. Right. Be too expensive. Right. So what I do is I find a dealer. That more than anything, we're on the same page right. about the green. That's that's the most important thing. Once yeah. I find that person, then we uh, sign an agreement, a broker dealer agreement, and that dealer becomes eligible then to sell any products that I have exclusive rights to sell. Okay, so let's talk about and that. that. What, so what are some of those products? I mean, give me a sense of how your business model works. You've got WeGo that's supplying you, obviously, with vehicles. I saw that you're now doing something with Nissan. Uh, you mentioned the Volt. So, so how does that work? How does how does Cayman? Where where do you come in in, in this product flow out of Detroit to okay. Aruba, for example? All right. Well, that's what well, WeGo. You know that you know the story there. Think City. Uh, obviously, I bought uh, a bunch of those cars. And they have been doing really good. I got to tell you, oh, I'm really? hoping that think I'm hoping that Think City 
uh, can, can revive itself. The car is perfect, and because of the mold, the plastic, right. uh, the body will never rust, yeah. and it has performed very, very well in the Caribbean. Um, then I had the opportunity to sell the very first Nissan Lily. As you know or may not know, Nissan does not export the Nissan Leaf to secondary markets like Grand Cayman. Right. So therefore, I had to buy the vehicles uh, with miles uh, and buy them around the country. So now I began selling those vehicles um, in the Bahamas, Grand Cayman, and also Aruba. Okay. St. Thomas is coming up. Uh, so, as you know, Nissan, the Nissan LEAF is the best-selling electric vehicle yep. in the world. Right. Okay? Yeah. Then we have AMP, AMP, you yep. remember the Mercedes? Yep. Uh, have an agreement with those folks. Uh, and our agreement is, excuse me, let me just turn this volume down. Okay.